Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. I hope everyone's doing good. I feel like it's been forever since I've been on because I didn't, I wasn't on last week. But I did have, I was out in Colorado. I had a fantastic time. And part of tonight's live is what I did whenever I was on vacation, doing a bike vacation, and I started to have knee pain on day two. And so I wanted to share with you guys on what actually I did. And I also shared it with another girl that was on the, on the trip or that I was visiting as well, Harmony. I shared with her what I was doing and she also had some pain on the inside of her knee and she said it helped her a lot as well in some of the later rides that week. And I was, it made me think, it's like there's a lot of stuff that, that I know to do, but you guys definitely don't know it. And I forget sometimes what all I know comparatively. And so I wanted to make sure I shared this with you guys because it, it helped me a lot. So easy day, day one, big day, day two, went for a hike, day three, kind of had a little bit of knee pain. And then day three, I had no knee pain and no knee pain the rest of the four days of riding, which is really good and really um, something that doesn't usually happen on a big, on a big uh, trip out west. So... Day two that I did, we did the crest that which is outside of Salida, Colorado. It's, I'm coming from 2,000 feet of elevation and it's at 11,000 feet of elevation. And so my lungs and my body just were not ready and not acclimatized for it. But I decided to do it and I was like, I'll just go slow, it'll be fine. And I, my muscles were taxed a whole lot more. I was walking a whole lot more. I was just moving differently and not very effectively and not using my muscles as I should. And that's probably where my knee pain stemmed from and started to act up. Now, after that day, I knew that I needed to do some things. You can also do all of these things that I'm going to talk about on the trail later on or on the trail whenever you're doing it and or later on after the trail whenever you're trying to recover. The knee pain that I am going to be talking about is on more the inside part of your knee. And one of the best ways of knowing if this these couple tricks are going to help you is based on the first thing that you're going to do to help treat it or the thing that you're going to do to help decrease that pain. So what you're going to do, you are going to put your knee in a nice relaxed position. You can put your other foot underneath. It's better if you're leaned against something because your quad can relax a little bit more. It doesn't feel the need to like hold yourself up and you're actually going to move your kneecap out and up. So I'm moving my kneecap this way and a lot of times and it'll be your kneecap and your skin and you're catching some of the other tissues that are underneath of that and this can be different connective tissue it can be some different cartilages so just just some stuff that's hanging around right into the inside of your knee and you're basically just dragging it over across your knee and you should feel a little bit of stretch now compare side to side and if you notice that one side, your more problematic side, is a little tighter, then you know that it probably needs a little bit of this love. So my left side is the one that I had issues with whenever I was on the, on the trail and on my trip. And it's a little bit tighter through here. And I haven't done this in four days since I've been back. <laughs> just as bad as everybody else. I'm not, I don't need anymore. I'll be fine. And so I'm just dragging that skin across and it feels a little bit tighter. Now I'm not dragging and holding. I'm dragging, holding, and then releasing. Hold and then release. And what this does is it just stretches out some of those tissues that are on the inside of that knee. So that's, that's thing to do number one. Okay. And to be honest, that's the thing that helped me the most out of that, out of all the rest of these and also changing some of the ways that I ride. So you want to do that when your knee is down and flat, again, with like something propped up underneath of it. And you also want to do that when your knee is fully bent and you want to drag and pull over. And I hope, can you guys see this? Can you guys see what I'm doing? Let me scooch forward. And so taking just your fingers just on the inside of that, in the bottom of that kneecap next to your tendon, and you're just dragging over and across. Now, if you have pain on the very bottom of your kneecap where you feel that tendon touch, 
or you'd be pain on the very top of that kneecap where you feel that tendon attached, this probably isn't gonna give you what you want because it's not treating what's causing you some of your pain. This is more so to help when that random pain comes up, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have knee pain, what happened? And it's to help stretch out these tissues here that you probably irritated and you probably just pissed off a little bit on your ride or on your hike or whatever you did the day before or on your run. Um, and just stopping even when it starts to flare up, that's when it's gonna help you even almost the most. So stopping, taking a break, and try this stretch. A lot of times my knee pad will aggravate this and will take it off if I leave it up and I climb too much with my knee pads all the way up. So that's another thing that flares up on me to, for different things within it. So that's number one, kneecap wiggle. It's a very technical term. <laughs> the second thing that I did to help was that I actually, I did some massage work around this inner part of my quad. So you have four different muscles in your quad, that's why it's called a quadricep. And one of them is more so on the inside. And if you, same thing, feel side to side, see if it's a difference. So here, it's a little bit tender, it's not the most fun place to push. I'm a little bit ticklish in my, in my thighs and so it kind of tickles a little bit, that like hurts bad tickles, I don't like this. And then I come over here and I, and I know that I'm hitting different things. So it feels a little bit thicker. And also it, it just, you know whenever you get a massage and you're like, ooh, ooh yeah, that hurts, but it hurts so good. This is what we're looking for. And so you're gonna find those places in this area of your quad or in any place of your quad because your quad has a very big relationship to your knee and to what pains are happening there or if it's pulling on it weird or pulling on it different and you need to think about what's happening there. This, if you do have pain at the top or the bottom of your kneecap, can also help that because a lot of times you're overusing your quad and you're not using other muscle groups that you may want to use. So doing some of these soft tissue working muscle massage, deep tissue massages, whatever you want to call it, you can use a tennis ball, you can use a foam roller. I just used my hands when I was out there on the trail, and then I used a tennis ball and um, my, my lovely uh, big black balls, because <laughs> I don't ever travel without them. <laughs> um, and so that, that helps within that. So if you, I would say even if you're listening to this video, dig in on your quad and see how it feels. If it feels different side to side in different spots, you may need to work on it a little bit. So that's number two, dig into your quad and find the, the hurt so good spots. So we got your knee wiggle, we got your hurt so good um, muscle massage. The next thing is where I put my foot on my pedal. So within knee pain, you it's usually a repetitive movement um, irritation. And so you're doing things over a period of time again and again and again and again and again. and that repetitive stress is what irritates the different groups of muscles or the different groups of tissues. Whether it's your tendon, whether it's like top and bottom of your kneecap, whether it's more so a meniscus issue, which I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's your meniscus is how your knee is actually cushioned and how your round femur can attach to the flat tibia, so the bone that's below it, and it's how it distributes that load. And so if you have this weird, awkward, repetitive stress, it can irritate that and actually tear your meniscus. Um, again, small repetitive stresses, which is exactly what happens whenever you're riding your bike. It's repetitive stresses, you're putting your knee, a flexion, extension, flexion, extension, bending, straightening, bending, straightening, again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And so if you have your foot in a weird position on your pedal, then that can cause this. Now. When you start to have knee pain, you actually can change how you have your foot positioned for when you climb. This is not how it's supposed to actually be taught for how you're supposed to do it correctly, skill-wise, um, bike clinic-wise. This, this is not how I want you to ride on a normal basis. This is how you ride if you have some knee pain and you wanna see if you can help it whenever you're actually riding. It's not how I want you to stay riding, okay? 
I make my point clear. This is not how anybody is supposed to ride unless you have some knee pain and you are trying to get through your ride and or just decrease the stress on it when you're doing some like bigger hills or longer gravel grinds. So your pedal, let me just use this guy. You're gonna put your heel more so on your pedal instead of more of your midfoot. Again, you're gonna put your heel on it. And so whenever you take your pedal stroke, you're gonna push down with more of your heel, which is gonna make you use more of your hamstring and more of your butt and not as much of your thigh. If you put your toe on the pedal, then you will use more of your thigh, more of your quad, which will internally and if so facto make you use more of your kneecap pushing into your knee and cause more pain potentially. So try it. It's again another technique I used that helped me to not have pain the next several days. Now, did I keep my heel on, my, on the pedal that way all the time? Mm -mm. No, I moved it around. And so my quad wasn't getting all of the activation within it. I was using more so of my hamstring and my butt than I would technically or normally for other climbs. Has anybody else ever tried doing that? Has anybody else ever been told to do that, to help decrease? It's the same way if you have knee pain. We talk about it a lot whenever we're talking about steps, that you put your entire foot on the step, and then to go up the step, you push through your heel more so than your toe. Same thing, it's not how everybody goes up steps, but it's a way you can now go up steps if you have knee pain and decrease the load that's on it. Same basic concept within that. Okay, so that's our third one. So we have our kneecap wiggle, we have digging into your quads, hurts so good, and now we have your heel put onto your pedal. Okay, the last thing is, is knee positioning whenever you're pedaling. So I talked about that repetitive stress, and whenever we talk about knees, I always like for people to think about them like, you're, like they're a hinge, like a door hinge. And so it, it bends, and or opens and closes. So your elbow is a lot of the same way. So it opens and closes within that. And if something is turned or moved differently, it can kink your hinge. So if I am moving, I want my knee to function as a good hinge. Now, if I have my knee twisted inwards with my foot on the pedal, then my knee probably isn't working as a good hinge, is it? It's actually getting kinked. And so knees always don't like inwards as much as they do outwards. And it's because my hip joint can line up better when your knee is outwards versus inwards. You see how it just doesn't, it more so kinks it versus outwards. It actually can function better that way. And so, and typically if you have a repetitive stress, specifically on the inside of the knee, then you are inside with your pedaling. And I know that I probably was doing that because I was so tired. I just couldn't get my muscles to work how I wanted it to. And I stressed my knee by pedaling on the inside for some of the hills that I actually did try to climb versus walk. <laughs> and so I ended up irritating my knee. Now, whenever the fourth and final thing is that I focused in whenever I was really going to climb something harder or put more force through my foot, through my leg, through my butt, that I wanted my knee to be out a little bit more. Not like, like, let's go bow-legged style out, but just a smidge, just a little point out, and then I would pedal that way. And it's not something that you want to always have to think about, but it can help you decrease the stress and the irritation that you have put on the inside of your knee until that irritation subsides and then you go back to your normal pedaling and your normal cadence, your normal movements through there and your foot goes back into its normal position on the pedal and you go hunky-dory. But all these things are things that you can change actually on the trail and feel like you can do something about it or that you're working towards something. Because I hate whenever I don't know what to do for something or whenever it's more of a mystery versus an understood and I can work within it and do something for it. It's like having a flat tire and not knowing how to change it or not knowing that you can, you have air to use. 
you was like, oh, well, this sucks. I just guess I just got to deal with it. You know, it's, it's having that knowledge to change these things, to make things better and not just having to just deal and cope. Um, if you have knee pain and you think this is going to be helpful for you, I'd love to know that it is. And also, if you have any other random things that you want me to talk about on here, let me know that too. Because I'm also, I'm always interested in telling you guys the things that you need to know or that you want to know. And to make you have more, more power, more control, and more confidence. Because knowledge is power. Knowledge is the ability to you know what to do and with that comes confidence and confidence within yourself, confidence within your body. So doing these things made me be able to climb. I climbed another 2000, over 2000 feet another day at another 11,000 feet. And I also climbed up on the crest again. Um, last day, that's when I was a little tired. I had a little accident as you can see from my, Little scarves. Of course, I hit that knee. And of course, that was the day I forgot my knee pads. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but if you have any other things that you want to do or that you want to know, I'd love to know. And if this is going to help you or if it did help you, I'd love to know that too. I hope that you try this. Give, it, give this a gander on whether or not it's going to help you or not. Um, and I guess everybody have a good night. Thanks, guys, for popping on and listening to me. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful night.